Yo, how's it going everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here and welcome to another review of the Boruto manga. We're going to be covering chapter 61 in today's review. Now going into this chapter, it seems like how the last couple of chapters have gone where there's been some developments going on, but everybody hanging out in Konoha is, you know, just hanging out. It's a slice of life chapter for the most part with Boruto and his friends just hanging out and training and, you know, buying ninja cards. But this chapter it seems like things are about to change and things could change quite drastically considering what could potentially happen in the next couple of chapters because yeah it looks like kawaki has left the village is he just trying to get away from code or is he going to confront code is he trying to make a deal with code who knows but anyways before i get into the chapter review i just want to say if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It'd be pretty awesome if you did that. Alrighty guys, let's talk about this chapter. So it's your typical day in Konoha. Boruto and his friends along with Kawaki are buying some ninja cards. And Boruto tries to get a Sasuke card, but he ends up with a Shino card, and he's obviously not happy about this. But he's got another reason to complain, because uh, him and Kawaki are being watched. In fact, they're being watched 24-7 due to them being targets of code. Along with Boruto being Momoshiki's vessel, and he could transform into Momoshiki at any time. So, uh, they're constantly under surveillance, and they're watched all the time. And Boruto doesn't like this, but he doesn't understand it, because don't... Doesn't Konoha have a sensory barrier that detects any chakra that's not registered to Konoha? Like, if Code were to show up, wouldn't they be able to immediately detect him, just like with Ishiki and Delta? That's a good question. And the reason that... Boruto and Kwaki are being watched is because, well, the ninja that's watching them isn't capable of taking out Code. He's a, likely a sensory ninja, and I like how Boruto roasts him, but it would be Lord Seventh or Sasuke that actually has to deal with Code. Now, Kwaki has been listening this entire time, and he's actually pretty curious about the whole thing as well. But he's also worried because when they bring up the fact that Naruto or Sasuke would have to deal with code, he remembers what Amado said a couple chapters back, where Amado basically told them that, yeah, in his current form, if Naruto were to go one-on-one -on -one against code, he'd most likely die. And this worries Kawaki. And Inojin drops a line that he's probably going to later regret, in which he says, yeah, unless somebody has the ability to erase their chakra, yeah, they're, they're not getting out of here or in here undetected. And this gets Kawaki to thinking, hmm, erase their chakra, huh? Hmm. More on this later. Now the scene shifts over to Sasuke and some Leap Shinobi, and they're looking at some claw marks of codes that they found, and it seems like these ninja are basically assigned to watch these claw marks just all the time, probably all day, possibly all night, maybe taking turns watching this, these claw marks to see if code shows up. And this scene's actually kind of funny because, uh, yeah, Sasuke just goes right up to the claw mark. And the Leaf Shinobi over here just starts yelling at him to get back. I'm like, dude, who are you to say this to Sasuke, of all people? But Sasuke comes to the conclusion that Code wouldn't show up from these claw marks he suspects. And he'd probably show up somewhere else. And the Leaf Shinobi are like, well, then why the heck are we sitting here for days upon days just watching these claw marks? Or these belt marks, or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> but anyways, we're watching these claw marks that are all over the village. And he's not coming from them. So what's the point? And Sasuke's like, well, it's not really my authority here. That's up to Sai and Chikamaru. And yeah, I don't know. I just, th I just think it's hilarious that this guy thought he could just talk back to Sasuke like that. I'm like, dude, even though Sasuke lost his Renegon, he's still pretty OP with his Mangekio Sharingan, so, uh, yeah, I wouldn't talk back to him if I were you. But anyways, moving on. Now, I like the conversation that goes on between Shikamaru and Amado, and even though Shikamaru's a little sus of Amado, he's over here like, yeah, I'm totally innocent. You don't need to worry about me. <laughs> even six months ago, I couldn't have predicted all these events. Which could be true, but you know, maybe this guy's had this scheme going all along. Who knows? <laughs> but I like the fact that some parallels are brought up between Kawaki and Code. Like Kawaki's obsession with Naruto, bordering on madness. 
And you have Code's obsession with the Otsutsuki bordering on Madison as well. To the point where he's going to exact his revenge on whoever killed Ishiki. That's how devoted he is to it. And similarly, Kwaki is so devoted to Naruto he'll pay any price just to protect him. Just to make sure he's safe. He doesn't want to lose Naruto. So I love the fact that these two are bringing this up. I just like the fact that Shikamaru says, well, after all this time, Code hasn't struck us. Maybe he's just depressed. And Amado's over here like, well, that's optimistic thinking. Let's hope so. <laughs> so Kawaki heads back home. It seems like your typical night at the Uzumaki house. Borto is playing his video game. Himawari is sleeping. And apparently Hinata is in the soap operas or dramas or whatever she's watching, but it's making her tear up, and Naruto over here looks pretty bored. But Kwaki decides to take the trash out, which Hinata asks, well, why don't you wait until tomorrow? Well, Kwaki makes the excuse that, nah, I'll forget about it. So Kwaki goes outside, and, uh, yeah, he jumps, jumps around, and then he seems to trick the sensory unit ninja that's hanging out outside surveilling him and Boruto. And he lands in a tree, and then he walks out, and then goes back inside. Everything seems normal. Boruto's even like, hey, Kwaki, you okay? But Kwaki just says, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. So as it turns out, the real Kwaki is actually outside still. The one that went inside was a shadow clone. So the real Kwaki actually takes off and is actually trying to escape from the village. But the sensory ninja doesn't notice this. Boruto is the only one that seems to notice that the real Kwaki is outside. And he knows where he's at. But why? What about the one that went inside? He realizes that it's a shadow clone, but why hasn't anybody else detected Kwaki's presence? And that's when he comes to the conclusion. Kwaki is somehow masking his chakra, but how in the world am I able to sense him? Meanwhile, Ada, using her ability to sense and see everything that's going on in real time, sees that Kwaki has taken off, and he's leaving the village. Code asks why, and why nobody is tracking him. And it's because Kawaki is nullifying his chakra. This is actually an ability that the Otsutsuki clan have. But Kawaki shouldn't be able to do this, but it seems like since his body is mostly Otsutsuki, it seems he's picked up on some abilities from the Otsutsuki clan. This being one of them. So he's unconsciously, at least seemingly unconsciously doing this. Or it's something that he's figured out as his body is developed. But anyways, bottom line is, he's nullified his chakra. So Code takes this opportunity to pursue... Kwaki. And using those claw marks, he actually emerges from a tree. So Sasuke's hypothesis earlier in the chapter was correct. He did not emerge from the claw marks that were at the wall, but instead random claw marks that were on a tree. So he emerges and he's using the claw marks to communicate with Ada. Ada, what, how are you even pronouncing her name? But anyways, um, she's basically telling him where Kwaki is and that's pretty much where the chapter comes to end, with Code pursuing Kwaki. So overall, I thought this was a pretty good chapter. It's definitely not a bad chapter, but not a great or excellent chapter. Just a good chapter. But it gets me excited for next month's chapter, and this is a feeling that I haven't felt for the last couple of chapters. Because uh, back in 2020, in 2019 and 2020, at the end of every chapter since Jigen invaded Konoha, it's literally held us all on the edge of our seats because we're like, okay, what's gonna happen next? Is Naruto going to die? Is Sasuke going to die? What's going to happen? What member of Kara is going to show up? Like, there was always so many questions going into the next chapter. And I loved it. And these last couple of chapters, I felt like we went away from this, obviously. We're back in the village. We're kind of just hanging out and chilling. And Code and Ada and Damon are doing their own thing. So it got to a point where it was like, okay, what's going to happen next? Oh, is Sumire going to expose Amado? Oh, and nothing came up from that. Whatever. So it really hasn't felt like there's been a lot of tension in the series as of late. But the fact of the matter is, the end of this chapter shows off that, yes, we're getting some tension in the next chapter. Because now I'm like, okay, what's going to happen in the next chapter? Is Kwaki going to confront Code? Is Kwaki trying to escape from Code? What's Kwaki doing? Is he going to try to make a deal with Code? Like, there's a lot of questions I have going in the next chapter. And what's Code going to do? Is he going to try and attack Kwaki? Is he waiting for Boruto to show up? Is he waiting for Sasuke to show up? Is he going to just try to attack Konoha now? Not really sure, but we got all these questions now. And we might get some of them answered in the next chapter. And I love the fact that this feeling is back. I hope that the next couple of chapters retain this feeling. And we get tension with each 
chapter and the ending of each chapter leading into the next chapter. So, yes. I have to say I'm excited for the Boruto manga again because I've been waiting for Code to invade Konoha and we're getting that in the next chapter. Well, we technically got it in this chapter, but he's outside of Konoha, so I'm expecting him to do something significant in the next chapter. So guys, that's all I got for this chapter review. So overall, a good chapter. It's good enough for a 7 out of 10. So in the comment section down below, let me know what you thought of this chapter. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What do you think is going to happen in next month's chapter? I want to see your predictions in the comment section down below. Anyways guys, that's all I got for this video. So, if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys later, and have a great day or night wherever you guys are at, and peace.